So we will read one question from uh, the writing of our friends. So this is a written question that reached us here. Dear brothers and sisters, thank you for giving us an opportunity to ask this question. The things that been happen over and over for some OI members that I can't understand. They have eagle wings high, have power over others. They forgot to practice the 14 mindfulness training in themselves before they try to control the others by very unskillful means. That's the question. Reading these words, the seeds my seeds of compassion in my heart are watered because I feel like pain. This person is suffering. May I say you and address you who wrote this. You are suffering, you are in pain. So first I feel that I feel with you. And I investigate and I wonder how you feel and trying to empathize with you, I, I feel disappointed by certain members of the order of interbeing, I feel disconnected, I feel hurt. So that's the first thing I believe we can do for ourselves, to identify, recognize, and name what is going on in us so that it cannot really just wash over us and carry us away and uh, we follow anger, blame, judgment blindly. But to first have a look inside and say, what is this situation, this connection I'm trying to establish um, doing with me. I have different angles on this. One angle is I have uh, similar experiences. We're all human beings, right? I remember many years ago I was in Plum Village in France, I was, I think, a, a lay friend or an aspirant or a young novice. I don't remember that, but the situation, I was in the bookshop. And one, the bookshop was full of people purchasing different things, and one person was looking at the brown robes and at the brown jackets for the OI members. Just looking at the jacket. Then another person approached, obviously an OI person, an order of interbeing, and said, oh, sorry, you cannot buy that. That's only for OI members. And I was like, who are you? Like, you know, you're so unkind. You could have said it so differently. And that's where I had exactly this notion of uh, who this person thinks he, she is. You know, is she something better than the other person? Maybe the other person wasn't even aware. Maybe it's her first time in the bookshop in Plum Village and she's just looking at it and, and getting like this arrogant comment. So that was my experience um, with that. And I had to practice with it because I also had the perception if this other person, this commenting other person, is an order, a member of the order of interbeing on the path of a bodhisattva, they should do better. You know? And then I thought, who am I? 
You know? First I thought, who, who is she? Like, but who am I to judge her who judges her? You know? <laughs> and I don't know who I am. You know? I'm not someone for sure who is um, alleged to blame others for blaming others. I can take care of myself and looking where this blame is coming from. In my case, it was just like my expectation of kindness. In this case here, it is like a personal connection and um, not a peer-to-peer -peer connection as I see. As I said, like, all I members are human beings too. They are on the path. Two years ago, some Deer Park brothers, we went on, it was right after uh, the COVID times, the lockdowns, and this new Delta variant where nobody was allowed in the monastery. So we said, we need to reach out to the people and, and go across the Southwest and see where our Sanghas live and how the conditions are there and how they can maintain and nourish their practice and their Sanghahood. So we set out and traveled through 10 states in six weeks and had retreats and Sangha evenings. And what I saw there was that each Sangha, very remote, deep in Wyoming, deep in Idaho, in Montana, in Utah, there are Dharma teachers who are taking on the responsibility of taking care of a Sangha. Once they had suffering, once they met the practice, once they had a spark of hope to transform their own suffering and committed their life to the practice and said, I want to go deeper and I want to practice deeply in my daily life and want to go the Bodhisattva path and receive the 14 mindfulness trainings. They became Dharma teachers and caring for a Sangha, organizing Sangha evenings, organizing retreats, mentoring mentees on the path. Besides having a family, having teen kids, having teen problems, having a job, having a partner, having friends, having obligations, having an ordinary life with a lot of challenges. Sometimes we believe practitioners should be better human beings. And I don't know if we can expect that. I think by practicing, we already do a lot. By, by vowing to practice and to stop and to look deeply to life and to ourselves and to relationships and people, we already make a huge difference. When we receive the five or the 14 or the 250 or the 350 precepts, we make a big difference in the world. So that's, that's another perspective to look um, at these OI members or these OI Dharma teachers who we see hurt us, who definitely hurt us. Asking ourselves, what does it do with me? You can also see what it is, what I need in this moment. I need a peer-to-peer -peer connection. I need to be heard, to be seen, to matter, to be someone, to be worthy. And then noticing what is important to me, what I'm lacking right now in this relationship is, where does this feeling come from? Do I know this from my childhood? Do I know this in the relationship with my parents, teachers, friends? Was I often like treated like this? And I thought, now I'm stepping into a realm of spirituality where this is not happening anymore. But it is still very alive in me and the seed of suffering doesn't need much water to come up again. How can I can take care of this? Is this maybe an opportunity to one and for all embrace it, rock it, cradle it, look at it deeply and become one and accept it? accept it as myself. I want to end with two quotes I want to offer you. One is from Tay. Tay said, you cannot love your enemy. It's impossible to, to love your enemy. But 
if you begin to understand, to look deeply, to investigate into that person, to this person's life, you will see that this person is suffering. And seeing the suffering of the other person will water the seed of compassion in you. And with a seed of compassion arising in you, you will understand the suffering of that person. And this person will not be your enemy anymore because you see where the suffering is coming from. And when it is not an enemy anymore, you can actually love that person. In this case, we can ask, having this insight in mind, we can ask, and the other story, what I told you, that these, these people, <laughs> our dear OI members, have families, have jobs, have problems, have challenges, and maybe overwhelming ones too, maybe physical ailments, whatever. Is there anything I can do for you to make your life more easy, more beautiful? Are you okay taking on so many responsibilities in the Sangha? You surely have family, you have other things to care for too. If there's anything we as your Sangha can do to, to help you take off something of your shoulder, please let us know, we are here for you. That helps communicate being a Sangha, being one body. The other quote is about forgiveness. I don't know um, who to thank for, but it's touching me every time. It says, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and to realize that the prisoner is you. When we are not able to forgive, we hold ourselves in a prison looking out of the prison, looking out to the other side and blaming the other person who put us there. But it's as easy as forgiving myself for being who I am, accepting myself, and forgiving and understanding the other person that will open the door of that, that prison and setting us free. So I wish you will be able to put some of these um, ideas into practice and I wish you a fruitful practice. Thank you. <laughs>